Senna. Pals. Well, here we are. Hello. <laughs> What's that? I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? I'm Jabby Kawai, joined by Char Kirk. What's up? We are continuing forward with Succession, episode three from season four, Connor's Wedding. Thanks so much for being here. If you're watching with us on YouTube, you are seeing a cut down version of our reaction because we can only show a limited amount of picture in picture. But if you want to watch the whole thing with us, no cuts, no interruptions, head over to our Patreon page or become a member of this channel. You'll get access to the full long cut reaction. You will need your own Mac subscription so you can open up each episode side by side with our reaction. We give you a three, two, one countdown sync, and it's like you're watching it with two of your favorite pals from the internet. Yeah. Now, if you're watching with us on Patreon, our memberships already. Thanks so much for supporting us here. I don't know what's going on with my eyebrow. It is itchy. Oh. Uh, uh, if you're watching with us on Patreon, our memberships already. Thanks so much for supporting us. If you're watching with us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications. Pretty please, Vota this up. Uh, let YouTube know you enjoy what you watch over here. Here we go. I'm uncomfortable with Jerry, how she's handled things on the DOJ number, on the spinoff. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I think we want to let her go. Oh, no. Wow. Jerry's your bae. So will you give her the heads up? Wow. Whoa, hey. no. Yeah, I, I think it would be nicer coming from you. I mean, you two, you know, you were, you were close. How far have things moved since the last episode? It's literally a day. The boat leaves in 30, and there's champagne and canapes to Ellis Island, and then after that, there'll be something more substantial after the ceremony. That boat. Yeah. Willa. It's like you're a princess in a fit. <sighs> Aw. I'm not looking. Oh. I'm not looking. Okay, I'll go. I'm going. No bad luck. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hi. Oh, Connor. It's all so lovely. Yeah. She seems so real. She's like, he's going to look after you. Just marry him. He's rich. We have a little, there's still a bit of grumbles about the ATN carve out, but. Well, that's not on the table. Well, right. But if, you know, he's, he's playing yeah, tough, but if there was no upside, he wouldn't be making the time. Jerry is getting the push. We'll tell her today, swing in the legals. We can begin to let it seep. Hand cruises around our neck. Wow. Sort of incompetence or worse. Yeah. I think the idea would be that she took her eye off the ball. Clean out the stalls, strategic refocus. A bit more fucking aggressive. He's cleaning house. Yeah. That was, it's a little surprising, but I guess she's always been one to just look out for herself. Yeah, I'm sad though, because I like her. No, I know. Have you done it yet? Uh, no, Jesus fucking Christ. I just got off the phone with him, okay? Like, she's not here yet. Are you going to do it? Yes, I'm going to do it. I'll let you know. Okay, okay back off, you inflatable dicky dick. <laughs> you can no doubt tell just from looking at me that it's not great, but you know, Dad said it, so it's a message. Is this why I'm not going to Europe? Look, it's not <laughs> official. Oh, God. <laughs> He's just unhappy about how long it took for you to settle with the DOJ. Bullshit. Oh, well, the number, I think the fine, too big. I danced us through a fucking thunderstorm without us getting wet. Okay, guess you just lost his confidence. Oh, since when? You can go legal if you'd like, but we are going to stuff your mouth with so much fucking gold. This is, I mean, you know that I am on, like, a human level. <laughs> like, obviously sad, but... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I'm good. <gasps> this is fine. This is nothing at all. Thank you for the consideration. She's getting a golden parachute. Like, I would take that. She's still pissed. Fuck all that. I'm out. I'll take this burning building and have fun. Dad, can you, uh, can you call me back? That was, uh, uh it was horrible. Uh, I'm not totally okay with, uh, are you kind of just being shitty with me? Your son is getting married and you can't fucking keep expecting me to bend over for you, like being cunty. So I'm just asking, that's the question. Are you a cunt? Okay, give me buzz. <laughs> that's so awkward. You think Madsen is gonna tell dad to just off? He'll approve the offers, what will happen. Dad's gotta go fucking lingonberry picking with Madsen. <laughs> oh. Hey, so the idea is uh, that dad will pop by, be dockside, and you guys are up here. And I think that's just cleanest. Oh, okay. okay then. All right, thanks. Okay. He's just gonna fly over to Sweden, wow. come back. Someone's gonna tell him. We should tell him. We should tell him. I think Roman's done enough telling for today. Hey, Roman. Yeah. Hey, uh, your dad is very sick. He's very, very sick. What? What? Uh, it, it's okay. Tom, is apparently dad sick. Uh, what do you mean? What? 
Frank thinks you should speak to your dad. And I can hold the phone. I can hold the phone near him if you like. Why does Frank think that, Tom? I guess if, it, if it's a chance to, you know, I, I, I think it is the last chance. What do you mean, Tom? Oh, no. Okay, he'll be able to hear you. That's... If he can't hear, he'll be able to hear you. Uh, you might want to get, uh... Yeah, 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 we'll get ship, we'll get ship, we'll get ship. I want to get ship. Okay, I'm putting you by his ear now. What about Connor? I, uh, uh, I hope you're okay. Uh, you're okay. You're you're going to be okay. Uh, because you're you're a monster. And you're gonna. You're a very very good dad. Uh, you did a good job. No, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't know how to do that. You can. I can't. You, your turn. Am I by his ear? Yeah. Be okay. It'll be okay. I know we love you, Dad. Okay, we love you. I love you, Dad. Uh, even though you forget, I don't know. I can't. I can't forgive you. Um, it's okay. Um, and 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 I love you. Uh. That's why Tom was calling Shiv. Yeah. Of course, no one thinks about Connor either, but that would suck. It's his wedding day. Oh, damn. Dad, this is Joe. What? Uh, he's on the plane, and he got. Uh, I don't, it's bad, and uh, they're doing chest compressions. What? They started doing chest compressions, and he was still breathing a minute okay. ago, but it's it's very bad. I think it's... Uh, yeah, so Shiv's coming. Uh, okay. They, uh, um, they, they think he's gone. Yeah, what? Think, what? What? Happened? What uh, do you mean? Well, they think, they think Dad died. What? Yeah. No. Sorry. No. Um, no, I can't have that. Hey, hey, Tom, hey, can she do it? Can Shiv uh, they've, they've speak to him? To can you, can you, can just you put to her next to him. his ear? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you to Shiv. Uh, is he hearing? Is he still hearing? Uh, I don't know, but I'm putting you there, okay? And you're by his ear, you can go now, you're talking to him now. Oh. Hey, Dad. Uh, hello. Um, you're gonna be okay? And I'm sorry, it, it, uh, is he dead? I don't know. I don't know if he's dead, is he fucking dead? I don't know. Okay, I'm putting you back there, okay? Uh, okay. I'm gonna put okay, you just, back um, there. just like go private, be somewhere private, just speak. It's weird, but speak, okay? Like, uh, you never know, he might hear you. Uh, Dad? Um, hey. Daddy? Uh, I love you. Uh, uh, don't go, please, not now. No, I, I, uh... I don't know, I do love you. And it's okay. It's okay, Daddy. It's okay. I love you. I... You want to stay on? Uh, um, Tom? Tom? Hey, Roman. What's, what's hey. happening? Hey. What's what precisely, like, tell me precisely what is happening right now. Okay, so, um... We're coming to, we're, we're heading back, I think. Yeah. Okay. Can you put me through to the flight deck? Can I speak with the pilot, please, Tom? And get the best heart doctor in the world and the best airplane medicine expert in the world and get them conferenced in and waiting and send a conference call number to me and to Tom and to Carl. Okay? Wow. He's really taking charge. Can I speak with the pilot? Can you put me through to the pilot? Um. The pilot can't speak to you right now, can Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Where's the information? We're going to... We're to turn the plane around. We're coming back to Teterboro. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, just... Is he gone? I don't know. I, I, he, he, he got very short of breath, and he was hurting, and then very... I, I don't... I don't want to bullshit you, Ken. I think he went. I think he's gone. Okay. 
Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Cake nightmare, okay? Con, Con, would you take care of that? Come here. What is it? It's just, it's private. It's serious. Come here. Five. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Come here, buddy. What is it? Is it just important? Come here for a sec. What? Is it Pop? Uh, is he okay? Uh, what is it? Is he sick? What is it? Dad's on an airplane to Sweden, but they're coming back. We think he died. Oh, man. You never even liked me. Wow. Hey, come. Hey, you, sorry. You know what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't even know what I mean. He did. He did. Yeah. I never got the chance to make him proud of me. He's dead. Do you, if you want to talk to him. Oh, man. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Anything? As I, I, can't, I can't do this. I can't, I can't. I can't. I can't do this, okay? What happened? What I'm happened? Sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He, uh, uh, he has okay. gone. I mm. think he has died. Well, okay, we don't know that. So. Sure, I get it. But like, <laughs> I think they know. Okay. Okay. Maybe. Well, maybe you, I think you have to accept that. Okay, I'm not like saying anything. All I'm saying is that we actually don't know. That's it. That's all I'm saying. Okay, right, well, yes, but you sound delusional. I sound, what, what am I, get out f***ing voted here? No, Rome, Sorry. I'm just saying, come on, you know, that... What? They, no. No, no, they don't. He's... No. It's okay. It's not he's dead. Well, no. well, okay, well, there's no need to f***ing say that, right, until we know. <sighs> I'm not being crazy. I'm saying a fact. I'm saying we don't know. And until we do know, it's not a very nice thing to say, is it? Okay. So f***ing stop. Okay. At that point, even if he came back, he'd be fucked. Yeah. It's just interesting how, you know, everyone's handling it really differently. Hey, Greg. Hey. So I might need you to, to whiz into the office for me. Um, it's a wedding day, Tom. Why? Why? Um, because Logan is dead. Uncle Logan. On it. You have to stick to Sid like a limpet, okay? And you delete my folder marked logistics. And, then you delete that from the and I might need you calling around with my narrative. You sing my song. Christmas break. What? what? What do you mean? Well, he's passed away and you've looked out. And yeah, what's at the bottom of your stocking, Greg? Huh? An old guy who fucking hated you. <laughs> Tom, man. Easy, dude. I know. Like. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Are you okay, Jesus? I'm not okay. I'm not okay. <clears throat> what is that? Okay, mm -hmm. and, and this is total lockdown. Okay, Greg? Total lockdown. If this leaks, it's a stock price rodeo and a f***ing slit throat for the big mouth, okay? Um, Everything all right? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, fine. Uh, Do you think your uncle's gonna make it? Do I what? what? Sorry, is your uncle gonna make it to the wedding? Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, God. I was like... How did she hear she that? She heard? They stopped the CPR. I don't oh. think they should, though. For your information, they're, um, they're starting to draft a statement. State, state Who board? asked them to? I don't know, but that they're feels, doing it. That feels... Yeah, that feels... Right? Yeah. 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 So, listen, what's going on with this statement? So, we're just starting to put the bones together for when, when we're going to announce this. What do you think? It's cancel, yeah? I think it is cancel. What do we tell them? Everyone will assume that it's you backing out, and that's fine. I guess the truth is, I'm scared if we don't, that, that you'll walk away. I'm always scared you're going to walk away. 
I'm so much older than you, Willa. And you're young and you're full of life. And it's very vulnerable. Yeah. My father's dead and I feel old. It's okay. Are you just with me for money, Willa? I mean, there is something about money and safety here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But. Yeah, but. I'm happy. I am. You okay? Mm -hmm. It's okay. I thought it was a nice attempt at being honest. We'll draft the statement, okay? Great, great, great. Um, we'll need them to sign off. It'll need to come from Frank or Simon or the board. Yeah, or... but we'll draft. Okay. And who will call Matson? Uh... Roman. I know, but... Roman has to do it. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I kind of need the room. Oh, sure, of course. I'm, uh... I'm pretty sad. I'm actually, right now, totally numb, but theoretically, you would say that I'm, yeah, that I'm sad. Well, <clears throat> the room's all yours. Good mess. Okay. Aw. Wow. That was cold. Well, I guess maybe her feelings are still hurt. Yeah, no, I understand, but still, like, his dad died. <laughs> Can we not set aside, like, petty grievances? Because she, she must know that he was only doing that for his dad. Right. So why take it out on him, you know? He's her godson. Right. If that counts for anything at all. Chip. Ready? Sure. Mm -hmm. Wow. Way to step up, Shiv. As you know, my father, Logan Roy, was pronounced dead on arrival at Teterboro Airport this afternoon. I'd like to thank the press for their respect at this time. You'll understand that I won't be taking any questions. But my brothers and I just want to say that Logan Roy built a great American family company. And as you know, the board will be convening in the next hours to decide on the leadership of the company going forward. This nation has lost a passionate champion and an American titan, and we lost a beloved father. Thank you. Were you and in terms of your roles at the company? She we literally intended. said no questions. I guess they still gotta try, even though she said no questions. Yeah. It's like, the family's grieving. That is dead. Okay, so we're gonna go see him? Do you want to? Shouldn't we? I mean, he's not gonna get angry if we don't. Uh. <laughs> yeah, right. It's crazy to me that Connor's not part of this. I know, it breaks my heart. But I guess he's just he forged ahead with his wedding. No, they were gonna cancel. I don't think they did. I think that was the whole thing. Was Connor wanted to keep going. But I mean I don't know. They, it seemed like a question mark. She said she wasn't gonna leave him. Yeah. I'm gonna go see him. Do you wanna? Go, uh, I'm, go I'm with gonna, your, go I'm with gonna your brother. Come on. Watch him down from here. Okay. This uh, it's, it's not for everybody. Like, I guess. I don't know. But, like, if I didn't want to, I would go and just stand okay. to be close. Not I don't know. Not everyone can do it. It'd be hard. My recommendation is don't. You cannot see it. I guess. Oh. Yeah. Oh, man. Are you okay? 
That's pretty fucking triggering. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll try to keep it together. Try, let me go get some. No, 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 no. Kleenex. No, no, no. I'll be all right. It was very real the way they handled that. Though. Yeah. It. I mean. I mean, uh, it's just like the way that all played out. It's just like that's just very real. And then like the conversations afterwards, it's like you were feeling it in real time. It was pretty. It's pretty wild. Yeah. No. I mean, I thought it was really good that choice to just have him go like that with no fanfare in a kind of like quite undignified way as well but sometimes it is like that you know it's like you can literally go anytime and sometimes you go in the bu- in the toilet you know yeah. and that's just and, and that's just how I relate I related a lot to uh, Roman just like the denial it's just like well we don't know it's just very human you know you don't it doesn't he's like it didn't it doesn't feel real it's like no it doesn't feel real yeah when you're experiencing it it's like no but that's not it's it's not real like he's just kidding right well, like, and just to uh, give people context in case they don't know you lost your yeah your father yeah and so yeah like the thing is the way the show sets it up you never know when they're being they never know when they're being tested and so for roman to leap to the conclusion that this is just an elaborate test it's you know the fantasy kicking in because you don't want it to be true right i mean the first the first step of uh, the grieving process is yeah. denial right but he was in that zone hard i was there too it's just like you know i got the call it's just you're you're trying to rationalize something that's just not rational right and so it's like no surely this is a joke and they're just no there's no way they you know you go through the whole cycle of things and so each of them were playing a different function of that experience um, and then to have to be forced into like this business negotiation thing right after that. I don't, I don't know how you do that. Yeah. You know, um, it's hard, but you have to be, and, and like, yeah, like you said, it's showing everything that goes on in that situation, you know, like Carolina took charge and was like, no, we have to get ahead of this. Like, yes, we're grieving and all that, but we yeah. absolutely cannot, like, we cannot be unprepared and it sucks to have to be the kids to be in that situation where you're like all i want to do is just grieve my dad right now but i can't even do that properly because i have to think about like the stock prices or the board or like our future and all of that like death is complicated in a way you know that's just wild how real that was the way they handled it like she's getting the phone call from tom that she just keeps sending to voicemail and then the last message roman left for his pops it's like all messy and ugly and that's, yeah. that's, and that's so real. Yeah, like I didn't talk to my dad for you know, the two weeks before he passed away. I was just sort of ignoring him. We had a weird relationship, you know, and I felt horrible. I think my brother hadn't talked to him in like a year. And so that, and that was the first time I had seen my brother in a long time. Like it'd been ages since I saw him face to face. Yeah, I was in the room when they, you know, put him in the bag. And it's just like, if you lose a parent, I recommend not being in there. Because it's like the ugliest thing you'll see. And it stays in your head, you know? So I understand um, Kendall staying outside. I think that's the move, honestly. It's like, well, you, yeah, you, now that you say that, I'm like, I don't think I could. Yeah, it's like you want to be in there like you've, because you're, you're trying to con- take control of the situation somehow and even though it's you can't control anything and so you feel like you're supposed to do it and then you then you do it and it's like you've just traumatized yourself because like what i saw i it's it just stuck in my rote memory for like months this is my favorite episode because i mean it's like it was it's the first episode that actually got me to this i, I mean we got you it, things always get you but like for me it was like it hit it hit like a real spot i don't know how I, how i would have reacted if i still had my dad i don't know if i'd still be behaving this way but i still have both my parents yeah and it hit me yeah because of that experience like i can draw upon that and, and say with like from uh, what do you call it with my own reference like the way they handled all of this is just like so fucking accurate to real life I mean, you know? I thought it was wonderfully acted yeah. from everyone. Like, and even for me, like the the standout performances. I mean, everyone was fantastic, right? But like, I really loved Kieran Culkin's performance as Roman, even before the finding out about his dad, right? Like when he was uh, firing oh, yeah. uh, Jerry, that was just so nuanced and so layered. Like yeah. you could tell just how uncomfortable he was and like, he's trying to say it, but like he doesn't want to. And he's like, you know, kind of like, please don't hate me, but also like, fuck, I'm so mad at my dad right now from him making me do this. And then when he got on the phone to talk to his dad's ear and he's like, he wants to say 
the nice things like he wants to say like I love you and I think he did but like he was also just it it wasn't their relationship wasn't that you know and I just thought it was really interesting how they showed what each of the kids did you yeah. know like how yeah. how they all reacted differently like how when they were trying to talk to him at at the end right like Roman was just like it's complicated like I just don't I don't know what to do. Did I do the right thing? And then like Kendall, you know, yeah. did his thing and he was great as well. And then Shiv, uh, when she said daddy, I was just like, I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> like I can't. It's a trippy experience to say the least. Like you feel so many things that and you feel guilty. All the things you feel is are valid, you know, and you just kind of kind of work through that. It sucks. It's the shittiest fucking feeling. And the thing is, what the show illustrates so beautifully is that even though their relationship was wrought with yeah. all kinds of tumultuous things and it was not ideal in the slightest and it was ugly, they still felt that loss, you know, it was still it was still awful for them. And it's like, yeah. that's. That's what made me appreciate this episode so much. It's just like all that fucked up stuff just kind of went away. And it's like, now you have to deal with this, that you don't have him anymore. And it, yeah. you know, I, I don't know if I'm making any sense or no, if I'm articulating I mean, it very I think, well. I think it's like, I don't know. I mean, I guess I can't speak for everyone, right? I'm just kind of like using my imagination a little bit. But I would imagine that even if you had a troubled relationship with a parent, most of the time, if you found out they died, you would feel sad about it. And you would have a, a plethora of, of emotions. Like, yeah, you'd be sad, you'd be angry, like, I, I, you know, feel guilty. Like you said, yeah. like there's so many different things, so many different layers that, that you would feel like just because you don't get along with someone all the time doesn't mean that you don't love them. And maybe if you don't love them also doesn't mean that they didn't have an impact on your life for for some reason or other you know uh i, I would have to co-sign with, with what you said about um, kieran culkin. Kier, kieran culkin the way he handled the phone call where he was just trying to find the words to say to his dad on the phone i was like what he he's what made me start crying yeah honestly yeah um because he's trying he was so in the moment like what's fascinating about him over the course of this whole show was I sort of took him for granted, if that makes any sense, like in almost like the way the show did. Like, I just kind of took him for granted in terms of his acting and all that stuff. And over the course of things, I've just seen how good he is, you know? Right, well, because I think throughout the course of the show, we've kind of like stripped away his exterior because like, yeah, uh, when he presents himself to us and to the public when, he, when he's out in the world, he's like, he has an armor of sarcasm yeah. of humor yeah um but it's hiding at his core a very vulnerable little boy yeah you know yeah. he's just out there trying to get the validation from his father and he had such a complicated relationship with his dad like his dad was straight up abusive to him yeah. you know and so yeah it would be complicated because like what what do you say it's like i love you but also like I can't say that because yeah. like maybe I don't really genuinely feel that, but I do love you. But like you were awful to me. And it's like just the way that he performed that all of those different layers were just so apparent. Yeah. I feel bad for not mentioning Connor <laughs> just because like throughout the whole thing, I'm just like, you got the three siblings who are in it and it wasn't until dad was already dead or whatever that they were like, shit, we should tell Connor. Yeah. And I wish, I guess that just goes to show as well, like how disregarded he is within his own family. I liked his acting quite a bit, the way he handled that situation, you know, yeah. when he was told the information. He was restrained. There are so many places you can take that script that he was given that day. There are so many different directions you can go. And it takes balls, it takes courage to be that restrained, I think, and not go to somewhere extreme with it. It's like, he, he, he still felt like the Connor we've known, and it was such a human response to the situation. Am I making sense? Yeah. Yeah, like, he's just such a human response to it, just trying to rationalize, deal, deal with things, deal with, like, the decades of the experience with his father and what he hasn't got, all the regret that suddenly, like, he's being filled with without 
emotional dumping. Like it was all very contained. Well, you I know think, what I mean? I think as well, like it's so easy to just kind of be like, oh, I have a big emotion. I'm yeah. going to play it big. Yeah. But in reality, it's probably not that. And when you think about as well, like societal norms, right? For a man to show grief and tears and all that, you're probably not going to, you know? It's it's very contained and that's what makes it more powerful. It's because you feel all of those things. Like yeah. you feel the the sadness, the the regret, the pain, the anger, all of it's there, but it's having a lid put on it. Yeah, well, it's, it's like you told me before, you know, when you're playing, it's almost like playing drunk, right? It, yeah. People have the tendency to go crazy stupor with it, right? But yeah. the, the, the thing is in real life, when you're drunk or when you're feeling upset, you're trying not to cry. Exactly. You're trying not to show you're drunk. And so the, the effort to hold it back, it's like, that's a, crazy thing to me it's like you have to feel it but you also have to want to hold, hold it, it back. back yeah like that's it's a two-layer thing that i think he did a really wonderful job with but that's one of the things like I'll, I'll always remember from uh drama school is my my principal was like it's your job as an actor to feel all of the emotions whether or not you can cry on cue or, or whether or not you cry in a scene doesn't matter so much yeah. because your job is to make the audience feel that yeah and i think they all did an amazing job at making us feel all the emotions like i'm still not okay and i'm sure yeah yeah you're I think I'm all right. Are you? Yeah. No, I've been through this before. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my first rodeo. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, it, it's, it's, it is weird, though, how like easily I can feel triggered by something like that. I remember being in improv class uh, at UCB, and someone decided that their, their improv story or whatever or their sketch was going to revolve around their dad dying. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, it wasn't that long after my dad passed away that I was in that class. And so... Even to this day, 10, 11 years removed, it still can hit me. I don't know. It's almost like a wound that doesn't heal. That's what I've heard. You know, it's, it's like it just kind of is still there. Yeah. Forever. You just get you get stronger to it is, is the phrase I was told. And so but watching something puts me in a vulnerable state where it can just access it. And it's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Damn it. I wasn't ready. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I forgot. I forgot. Your sister warned me. She said, um, there's an episode. I thought she said it was episode four. She said, there's a good chance that he's going to get triggered because she said that she got really triggered yeah. by it. Yeah. And so when that started happening, I was like, oh shit is this it so that's why i kept looking over at you yeah. like just to make sure that, that didn't you help were okay. at all <laughs> that didn't I was help like, are you okay that just made me more self-conscious <laughs> that you were doing that <laughs> i'm sorry i yeah. was just checking i was like oh I'm no like, why I the just... fuck is a child looking at me <laughs> just, right now i was so concerned about you because i was just like oh no is he gonna are we gonna make it through the episode Do you, you wanna okay stop? That, that is the equivalent of like when you're doing a reaction with someone and they look at you and they're like are you crying and it's like well not anymore <laughs> i was like I'm i was sorry. so i was so I'm immersed sorry. In the drama, and I feel you looking at me. I'm like, I what know. is happening? I was just like, I was. Yeah. It was. It came from a place of caring. Okay, I wasn't laughing at you for crying because yeah. I was feeling terrible. No, I know. As I know. well, I know. So, uh, no, but it, it, great episode. Um, it, it it was highly unexpected. What's amazing, though, you guys might have heard me talk about this if you've been following along our reactions for a while. This is what Steven Spielberg ruined. This is the oh, thing he spoiled. Yeah. What do you say? He said that the father passed away and now like the kids, you know, they, they, something about like how the kids will handle it. He gave away that. I mean, honestly, I don't think that's a massive spoiler because I feel like that is the direction it has to go. I thought he was going to die in episode two, Achara. So like, <laughs> th this is a massive spoiler for me. Like, I thought he was going to make it to the end. He's on all the fucking, you know, pictures and stuff. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought they would kill him off at episode four. That's so unexpected. Three. Or three, whatever. God damn! Like that's so unexpected. That is quite unexpected. You I know? expected it to be like maybe episode eight. Yeah. Seven. So for me, it is a spoiler. Yeah. You know, um, I, I, I didn't see it coming. The way it happened, when, when like Tom called them up and was like, "This is what's going on," I was like. This is real. Like you were like, is he? Jo I'm like, this is not a joke. Right from the beginning of it, like it was so 
beautifully handled from the writing and directing yeah and the acting it was like wonderfully handled yeah and i want to shout out uh matthew mcfaden as well because like all throughout like how he was being just very calm and it's not an easy thing to be the point of contact when you have to be the one to be like okay so this is what happened and your dad's not breathing and they're doing chest compressions on him now and yeah. he like held it together really well but then when he went into the back room and spoke to Greg and kind of had his vulnerable moment like yeah. I really felt for him as well yeah. you know like yeah. finally being able to like break for a minute and I'm sure maybe I'm just projecting but I'm sure like he wanted to be there for for Shiv and they had that moment as well where like he came and then she hugged him but then quickly realized like actually I don't like you <laughs> I'm gonna walk away right now no that's you know? there, it, it, that's confusing yeah I mean yeah because it, yeah it, of it, course that's so natural though. yeah it's like even if even if it was an ex or something it's like we can put aside uh, a separation or th the decision to not be together to like just be there for you on a human to human level right now because yeah. you need someone yeah you know i thought that was really nice as well that's rough God damn. Um, I wonder, I do wonder what, how they're going to deal with this in, in the episodes to come. Yeah, there's still a lot of show left. Yeah, that's wild. I don't know where, how to conclude this uh, other than like, you know, if you have just experienced something similar of loss of any kind, it's like you just got to kind of work through those feelings, you know. This is pivoting in a weird direction, but it seems right. Um, yeah, and also you know, that's why I'm always like... It's if it's with your family and you've got a disagreement and like and you're able to just kind of resolve it or do something to resolve it. Here's the thing. Um, some things can't be resolved, you know? Sure. It's just like you're coded a particular way, that person's coded a particular way, and it kind of is just stuck, you know? And that's kind of how life can be sometimes. And it sucks. You know, you, you do your best to work it out and smooth over the, the bumpy parts. And hopefully, you know, you guys can hug again and be in the same room and have a good time and smile and whatever and be family. But sometimes you don't get to have that. Um, yeah. So irrespective, though, it's just like if you experience that loss, you just know that like all the feelings you feel are valid and you work through that and you'll get stronger over time, you know, and you, you learn how to heal uh, and the best thing you can do is be busy just be as busy as you can you know exercise get creative go, work whatever hang out with friends don't be afraid to reach out to friends because that's one of the things you end up doing is kind of becoming a recluse because you're not trying to burden anyone with your emotions yeah um, i think it's also yeah because it's awkward yeah being, like because i never know how to be around for for people who are grieving do you know what i mean like i'll be like I'm here, but also like, I don't know how often are you supposed to check in? Like as often as I would say, check in. Yeah. yeah just, just regularly check in. Yeah. And, but like, it's tough. You have to suss it out because you sort of have to let the person you're checking in on guide the conversation a little bit because my mom would get triggered every time someone would call her and like start talking about my dad and then she'd break down in tears. It's like, that's not what you're trying to do to somebody, you know? Yeah. Um, and so like, you kind of have to feel it out and be like, maybe talk about something else entirely yeah like that might be the best way to check in and if the person gets angry at you just accept that and and then and, but you stay there in that moment with the person you well know? yeah that's like what tom did exactly yeah exactly um so <laughs> i mean i i remember feeling angry you know when i showed up to you know at my parents house i was confronted by two cops who verified what happened and they said i'm sorry for your loss and i just wanted to fucking hit them i was like you don't know who I am. How can you possibly say that? That's where my mind went. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, but they're doing their job and they're saying the best thing they can to me. It's awkward. But I'm irrational and raged. And like, thankfully I didn't do anything stupid. I was just like, okay. <laughs> and they walked by me <laughs> and I moved on. But like a lot played out in my mind, you know, because I was just feeling so many things, you know? But anyway, that's nothing. it doesn't matter. So moving on. All right, you guys, thanks so much. Um, be well, and if you're able to, tell your loved ones that you love them. And um, thank you. <laughs>